Hi, this is Dan from Akatika, and today we're going to talk about building the controller section of the PR102 preamp. The controller is interesting. It is clearly the most challenging of the builds that you will do when you're putting together a PR102 preamp. What I'd like to do is if you're about to build one, it's great if you would watch this first because I can warn you about some of the common mistakes that people make. But first, let's start with a little commercial. This is the manual for the PR102. And of course, you can still just download the manual and print it out yourself on your very own laser printer. But we have taken the time and the trouble and the expense to have manuals printed up. They're coil bound, full color, high quality paper, plastic fronts and backs. They cost us way too much money to produce these things and we sell them for way too little money. They'll be up on the website soon, but this is really a nice way to build your kit because it lays flat and you can see exactly what you're doing. So with that commercial out of the way, let's talk about the controller. The first interesting thing to note about the controller is it has components on both sides. You can see that side has got all the switches and LEDs. The other side has got the microprocessor and the digital logic that fills out the rest of the controller. That in itself makes this a bit more challenging because when you solder this side, you have to make sure that the body of your soldering iron doesn't do things like lean across one of the switches. Because one thing that we see happen is that people send me emails saying, Dan, the board went together okay, but I kind of like melted one of the switches. Can you send me another one? So the idea of today's short video is to just tell you all the things that people seem to get wrong. Doesn't happen that often, but it's enough that it ruins their day for sure. So we just mentioned the first one where when putting it together, they let the body of the soldering iron melt one of the switches. The next thing that happens I don't know why and how it happens as often as it does, is backwards LEDs. If you get the polarity of the LED correct, it lights up beautifully. Get it backwards and it's a DED, a dark emitting diode. It's not a useful way to install a diode. So there's a fair amount of information in the manual about that. Let's take a look and see, and maybe we can prevent one more person from getting a backwards diode. Each of the LEDs will get mounted off the board a control distance by the insertion of that white nylon spacer. So the only question that comes up is which lead is the anode and which lead is the cathode? Well it turns out that before you cut the leads of the LED the anode is always the longer of the two leads. The triangle part of the symbol represents the anode. The bar part of the symbol or the line, kind of like a minus sign, represents the cathode. Positive terminal anode, negative terminal cathode. Now let's take a look at the PC board, the markings on the PC board. You'll notice that the pen is pointing to the anode. That's the triangle looking part of the silkscreen symbol. That's the positive side. So that says that the longer of the two leads is going to go here into that hole. And as long as you do that, everything will work. And I'm pretty sure all of the LEDs are oriented in the exact same direction. So once you get one of them right, you've gotten them all right. Get one of them wrong and you've probably gotten them all wrong. Hopefully this will take care of the problem of the backwards LEDs. But LEDs aren't the only things that people get backwards. These resistor networks here are often put in backwards. Turns out that each resistor network is marked by a meatball, as my friend John P. used to say. And the meatball is pin one. Pin one comes at the square pin of the PC board. You can see the square pin on the PC board before you've installed the resistor network. Over here, you'll find that the square pin is here on this side. And for RN2, you'll find that the square pin is here. 
meatballs go into square pens. And if you get the meatball in the right place, you won't have a problem with these two guys. The next thing that people sometimes get backwards is the cable connectors here on the side of the board. I don't know how they do it. There are very clear pictures. Take a look. You'll see that there is one opening and the single opening goes to the outside of the board, single opening to the outside of the board. Inside the board, you'll notice there are two openings in the plastic, two openings in the plastic. Get that right and you've got all the problems of the world solved. The next thing that people will sometimes do is take a look at these ICs. They've got 14 or maybe 16 or in some cases 20 leads. One sad story I've seen is people will put the IC through the board, go to the other side, solder everything up, and not realize that one of the leads never made it through the board. It's bent out sideways, lying along the top of the board. So it's always a really good idea, once you've put the IC in, maybe just solder the corner pins flip it over and inspect and make sure that you see a lead that goes through each one of the holes that the ICs mount in. And with that, we've got most of the things that people get backwards or get wrong. We're going to address one more thing that people find challenging, mounting the controller into the box. The big trick that we have to do is we have to match up all the buttons to all the holes. That's not that hard. The hard thing is we've got to match up the LEDs to all the LED holes. And that's going to take a little bit of finagling unless you built everything perfectly square and beautiful. We're going to start that process and you'll watch me adjust things and hopefully not swear too much as we get this going. So we'll just get started by fitting it up to the hole and we can get guided in the first part of the way just by the buttons. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around to the other side of the world and we'll see what we can do to get the LEDs in the right place and going through the holes. You'll notice this LED, that LED are kind of through. This one, you might have to zoom in a fair amount, but it looks like we're missing left to right a little bit there. And then if we look at the very top LED, kind of looks like it's bent a little high. So this is a process of just kind of by degrees we're going to do this. Now over here, take a look at the tone control LED. It looks like that one is way the heck out in left field. With a little creative wiggling, we found that these five LEDs line up really pretty nicely. And in the center, they're trying also. Looks like the biggest issue here might be that phono LED is a little out of the way. So what we'll do is we'll bring a little more light to the picture and see if we can see better what's going on. To me, it looks like the main problem is that the phono LED is out of alignment. So let's pull it out and we'll just give it a little bit of a bend, pretty much straight south. It's pretty easy to see that that LED has been bent a little bit out of the way. So let's give it a little bit of a bend. That looks pretty good. And let's try another fitting. And of course, we use the LED, the switches to locate the LEDs. First order. And a little wiggling. Ooh. And we are through. And once you have it in place the first time, you might want to grab a screw or two and put it in the corner so it stays there. The final test we should do is to make sure that the receiver for the remote control works. So grab your remote control, put in a pair of AAA batteries, aim and fire when ready. 
And there we go. That looks promising. All right, we won't bother pushing through everything, but you can see that, once again, we were successful. So now you know some of the places you can get caught up or perhaps trip when you're building the controller for the PR-102. Hopefully, with a little bit of good luck, you were able to see and watch this video before you built the controller. That's all for now. We'll catch you next time.